This video is going to talk a little bit more about RStudio projects and why we recommend using them. It says part one, there may or may not be a part two, but uh, let's go ahead and start. The So RStudio, just as a reminder, is what we call an IDE for R. Uh, R is the software platform that um, we're using, but we're using it through the RStudio interface. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's essentially a wrapper. It's an interface to the R uh, software platform that is intended to automate certain uh, common functions and to facilitate its use and to simplify how things get done. Um, and so uh, for example, if we look just at the R console, if you use R without R Studio, you will just get this kind of naked R console. You can, uh, you know, run commands in the console. And uh, if you want to write scripts and different things, there are ways to do it. People will uh, have a lot of different ways that they interact with R. But R is basically the console. You can um, have lots of third-party tools to... Uh, interact with R. And so R Studio is one that we've, it's a recently developed interface. It, it's nice because it brings a lot of things together in a single window. Uh, so here's our R Studio. So over here we see that we have the console, we have script windows here, we have information on the workspace, we have uh, the files that are in the current directory that we're working in. And so it's, it's just nice, it brings a lot of stuff together. Everything that you can do in RStudio, pretty much you can do in R. It just doesn't look as good or function as well, uh, at least for from our perspective for a lot of people. So um, projects are the same thing. The, you know, in, in just about any uh, software uh, environment that we're working in, we work, we you know, distinguish projects by folder structure or directory structure. So we store files associated with what we're doing in a particular directory. And in R, um, the notion of a working directory is where is R currently pointing? What folder or what directory are we currently working in? And so um, you can do all that manually through syntax commands in R of setting working directories to tell R where you want it to be at any particular time within the context of an R script. However, uh, what R Studio has done is created this organizational notion of projects. And what projects does is it just automates, simplifies some of that work of managing multiple working directories. And so it does It does uh, run some code behind the scenes for you so you don't have to think so much or worry so much about what's going on. Um, a lot of people prefer to do everything manually. Uh, from our perspective, it's easier to use our projects just because it does a lot of nice things. So um, let's hop over to R for a second. And I've just got my uh, native R interface. And so um, let's, uh, and I'm, I'm in a directory. Let me say a word about uh directory structure again of how how we generally organize information. So I'm working on a Windows machine. I have the documents area. I'm actually using Windows 8, which is very similar to Windows 7. I've created a folder 267 Spring 2013, and that's where I want to store all of the work associated with this course. So the default place I want to be when I'm using uh, RStudio is in this folder, this root directory right here under this uh, 267 spring. Off of this root directory, I'm going to create folders for each thing that I want to do. This no working directory is part of uh, just the example I want to show in this video. Assignment 1, if I open assignment 1, then I have the files that are associated with assignment 1, the actual assignment itself, and then some script files. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Now the notion is, when I'm interacting, let's say we're in assignment one, if I'm working in assignment one, I need to tell R that this is the directory when we're in R, either R or R studio, I need some way to tell R that this is where I'm working. And so we can do that through script commands, uh, just R script commands, or we can set this as a project directory, and R will then run some of those commands behind the scene, and it'll help us keep our work organized into this folder, everything we do associated with this. So let's um, go back into R, and let's go into this. Um, so the first thing you can do in R, 
uh, I'm going to jump around, sorry. I'm just going to jump around a bit here. Within the options, we've talked about this before in the past in 241. The options menu in our studio is quite useful for setting up. It tells us, you know, what R we're using and where it's located on the hard drive. The default working directory is something that's useful in our studio. And what this says is when I'm not in the context of a project, where should R studio be pointing at? And so I've picked this directory I just told you about. I can browse back to it. So I'm in this, I'm in the My Documents area. I'm in this, this basic folder, this 267 folder. So when I'm not in a project, I want R to kind of be in that, uh, in that folder. So that's what, I'm, that's what the uh, default working directory is. And that's where when I start an R Studio session, that's where it'll start if I set that. And so now let's go into um, this no working directory. I don't have any projects set up right now. And I'm just going to click on this test one R. Notice so I'm in the no working directory folder. I've got a subfolder that I've named sub D and I've got a dot R file. So I've got a script file. If I just click on that script file, it's going to open it up. Uh, and if I click on this, it's going to expand that window all the way down. And so let's let's demonstrate how to manually set some directories here. So if I want to set my working directory to this um, location, one thing we noticed in class is RStudio has provided some buttons here. You know, in the RStudio interface, all these buttons are really doing is running some syntax for you. It's running some R script files for you, and it's saving you the time of having to, uh, to write the code. And so, for example, if I click on more, I can say, hey, this folder right here where I'm at, I want to set that as my working directory. And if I click that, our studio is essentially running a set work, a set WD or set working directory command. Notice that it's in quotes. It's using this tilde because the tilde is referring to the My Documents folder. So that's kind of um, a path shortcut that it's using. So if you know, I can actually just cut and paste this, paste this, which is what I did. So if I if I um, highlight this and run it in my code, right? So that sets the working directory to where I'm at. And actually, let me let me bring this up here. Get WD is get working directory. We can put that right up here. If I run this command, that's going to tell me where I am right now. What does what is what is the current working directory set to be? And so here it is. Notice it gives a full path name back to me when it reports back. It's C users, SC Grambo, that's me, documents. And uh, so that's one way you can uh, get RStudio to write this code for you, and then you can put it in your script file and go ahead and do that. Now, if we don't use the squiggles, um, so if I go to a Word folder, let's go to this working directory. If you click up here, there is the path name. Okay, and notice that it's C users, I see grammar documents. Notice that it's using these um, backslashes. Now the problem is, Megan mentioned this in class, backslashes are used for something else in R, and so you have to use a double backslash to tell it that you're actually using a, uh, a directory, um, you know, uh, distinguishing between directories here. So if you, if we highlight this and run it, click run, and then we uh, do the get working directory again, paste that and run that. Notice it's the same place, right? So I, I can I can get use the the set working directory to get uh, RStudio to give me the code. I can also pull it from a Windows Explorer folder. And also notice how it reports it back. It reports back. It likes our studio likes forward slashes. So you can also replace the double backslashes with forward slashes, and you will get the exact same uh, effect. Right. So the three different ways here to refer to the same location. Now, if I want to know what's in this directory, I can of course look down here. But if I'm not in our studio in R, I can use syntax. I just type list.files open paren close paren. And it's going to list in the console window sub D, which is actually a directory, and test1.r, which is this file, right? And so this is the, the, the kind of nice thing that RStudio does. It puts it in a nice Windows format for me so I can see it. If I didn't have RStudio and I was just in the R console, I would, want to, I would use this list files command to figure out what's in here, okay? So 
let's say that we want to switch to um, our working directory, switch to the subfolder called sub D. So we can say set WD sub D, and it knows that because I'm already in um, the no working directory folder, it's going to interpret this without a path name as go to the subdirectory of the current uh, working directory. So if I run this, and then I get the working directory. I'm now, if you look, now I'm in the sub D folder. Okay. And we can also set the, we can also move over and set the working directory. If we go back up our uh, breadcrumbs of directories, we can go over to the assignment one directory by putting that path name in and running that command. And then if we do get WD and run that, it will tell us that we are now in the assignment one and we can also list up files there and uh, highlight and run that code and it'll show us the the folders the uh, files that are in that folder okay so so we can um, we can skip projects altogether and use combinations of the set working directory to tell our in our studio where we want it to be pointing when we're working on specific files and so a lot of people will manually use these setwd commands in their script files to control uh, the flow of information and where our studio is looking at right now the other way to go about doing this so um, so what I've done here let's talk about the uh, assignment one folder let's go back up to my root 267 folder I went up to the website and I uh, downloaded the topic uh, one week one assignment and I've got the script file and the key script file which I'll be going into in another video. Um, but so I've, I've put those files there so I have this folder structure. If I want to create a project there we can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and close um, close this stuff out. I'm going to clear the console. You can do that by going to edit and clear console. And now let's go, uh, I can either go up here to the right and create a project or I could go to the project menu and say create project. Now I get, I can do, create a, a new project which will create a new directory and associate a project with it. But right here I've already got an existing directory so let's click on that and then let's browse uh, to the documents folder, to our course folder, to the assignment one folder and now let's select this folder Notice it's using that shortcut tilde notation. Now I create the project. And so now it's it's moved me, the set it's set the working directory to this folder. And everything that I do, so what the project is going to do is it's everything that I do here, it's going to kind of associate with this folder and with this project. It's going to save my workspace if I want it to. And so it's it's helping me organize everything into this folder and I, you know so it's just it's just a convenient way to organize our work and avoid having to use all the path names and all those things it's just our studio is doing some of that behind the scenes for us so um, so that is the project so let's let's also take a minute and let's say this other folder that we had let me pull back up here. Let's say I want to assign a project with this no working directory folder as well. Well, let's go back up to our project menu. Let's create a new project. We have an existing directory. Let's browse to the same place. But now let's pick this folder as our project. And it's going to name the project uh, the same as the title of the folder that we've associated it with. So now I'm in the no working directory project, right? This is a subfolder of that. So I can open up this script file, click the expansion. So now I can see everything that I'm doing. Let me pull this back up uh, a little bit here. I can pull this down to here. I want to be able to see this. So um, I have this script file. Now let's say for some reason I want to jump back over to my assignment one folder. Well, I don't need to close anything or do anything like that. I just need to go find assignment one in my project list, click on it. It's going to switch me to that project. Let's open up uh, one of our script files over here in this project. 
right? So I have all this information. And basically now I can jump back and forth between projects. Notice what's going to happen. I have all this stuff open. Give it a second to switch back. Okay, now, so it's, it's moved me back to this other context in this project. It's closed all the files I've had opened. It's reopened what I had in this project. So again, it's just, you can jump back and forth between projects. And so it's just a convenient way. And we'll, as we go through the course uh, over the next several lectures, we'll show you a little bit more about how to utilize kind of this project structure. Um, I think that's all I wanted to do for this video. Um, I will go through the assignment one in the next video.